We're joined by Coach uh, Jimmy Patsos right now. Hey, Coach, how you doing? How we doing? You back? You were sick last week, huh? Yeah, I, you know, I, I ran into something, and it's still kicking my butt, but I couldn't miss the, uh, another chance to talk to you, Coach, especially after I found out the guys hit you up for all the tickets in the world, so I had to make sure they didn't do that to you again. No, nah, they're good. Have them come down Sunday. Bring your daughter. Come on down. Absolutely. Big game Sunday. Well, first you got Fairfield on deck, right? We got Fairfield. We're on the way down right now. And the, so I'm on the bus. That's why I'm not in the studio. Well, I guess I'll allow it. And then after last night, last night, tough, heartbreaking loss. My question, Brady told me I'm stupid. Let's see if you think so. When you have come back from so far down, sometimes it's just it's hard to finish that off. Like there isn't just quite enough gas left in the tank. Is that possibly what happened? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's, you know, that's, yeah, look, a lot of these times you come all the way back, you finally take the lead, and then you let up on uh, the panic. That little extra adrenaline doesn't kick in. But, I mean, we did good. You know, A.J. English, hey, he made beyond NBA threes, two of them, beyond NBA threes. We had, you know, kind of a, I thought Brett took a charge. They called it a block, no big deal. Then we missed a three. But age English, we kind of lost them. But on the other hand, they were 30-footers. They were 30-footers. Our college line's 21 feet. These were 30-footers. So he made them. You know, one of them, we lost them a little. The other one, Brett was kind of on them. We just, he made tough shots. And, uh, but we can't give up 57 points in the first half. That's not okay. We had a nice film session, and now we're on to Fairfield. Proud of our guys for not quitting. I love our crowd. A Monday night to get 6,000. Uh, we our, our, our biggest two games this year have been Monmouth and Iona. They've both been on Mondays. I don't have any idea why. I'll have to ask the league that. But for our fans to come out and get 6,000 is great. A uh, great crowd. And uh, they energize us to come back. I just wish it could have happened a little more. But proud of the players for not quitting and for keep grinding. So A.J. English has 32. He had six threes. Now for you guys, Nico Claret, the freshman, he doesn't score like he's been scoring. But I think the game turned when in the second half he really started D'ing up English man-to-man. Was that a big key for you guys last night? Yeah, Nico, you know, he, he didn't shots, but it's, they, they weren't bad shots. And a couple went in and out. But he, uh, you know, he's finding his way. Nico Claret is 18. We have, we have four freshmen. Two of them are 18 and two of them are 19. The average freshman in college these days is 20 years old. So, you know, that being said, we're adjusting to that. And, uh, you know, Nico did a really good job on English. You're not going to stop him. you just got to contain him. But he did lose him at the end. You know, at the end, he lost him. He ran back, and he thought he took LeVon's guy and thought LeVon was going to take his. You can't make that mistake. You know, Paul Pierce talked about Paul Pierce, how he wanted to guard LeBron James. He wanted to guard Kobe Bryant. You know, he... He learned that you're going to give up shots, but he wanted the challenge. And I think Nico took the challenge, but for a couple minutes he lost him. And that, you know, it can't happen when you're playing a great play. AJ English is the best player in the league since I've been at Siena. Okay, he was at, it was at Iona when I was at Loyola for one year, but for the past three years, he is by far the best player in the league all combined. Can't lose him, but we did. Now what happens is we go to Fairfield and Marcus Gilbert, they've won five in a row. They're playing well. Marcus Gilbert's their best player. He's a senior. Brett's going to have to guard him and, We'll see what happens. It's a really important game tomorrow night. And we got short rest again. That's just how it goes. We're coming off a short rest where we play on a Wednesday night. I don't know. We're a Friday, Sunday league, but for some reason the Mac likes to all of a sudden they're trying to get eleven teams games instead of ten. So this is an experiment that Commissioner Enzer and John Dargenio, who's the head of the Mac basketball committee and stuff, they're working it out. So we have short rest, it's an NBA type thing where you have a day off and you gotta play. So you can't feel sorry for yourself. We had a good session and now we're heading down the road and we're excited to play fairfield coach jimmy patsos of the cna saints brought to you by all-star wine and spirits coach you can lock up the third seed how important is it to get the third seed that's yeah, huge i mean i think top five is what's most important because you only play three games instead of four but you know the first and second seed they get a bit you know we, we probably washed that out last night we lost our chance to come in second we were on the nit radar you know the nit was calling us and sending us forms to fill out it's not going to happen because the winner of our league, if you don't win the MAC, if the winner of our league doesn't win the MAC, you automatically go to the NIT. But we had RPI, good numbers and everything, but we had to win last night. And we really, like I said, we had a great effort, but we came up a little short. So now you got to focus on the MAC tournament. And playing three games is a, is a lot better than playing four. Now the third seed plays, I guess, the winner of six and 11. So that's another good thing. You play a team that's already played. One and two is the most desirable then three, and then four and five. After that, you got to play four games, and we all know how hard that is. You can be done, but it's harder. So 
proud of the team. 19 wins is great. We're, you know, getting ready for the MAC tournament. Our sights are the MAC tournament in terms of winning it, but we got a big game against Fairfield, and we're excited to play it. We like big games, you know. Coach, we've been talking about Jimmer all show. Jimmer signs with the Knicks. He only plays a minute 49 last night. He hits a three in his only shot attempt. If you have a guy, Jimmer's got a 10-day contract. He's got five games. How would you use Jimmer in that situation? Would you let him go? I mean, I don't know. I mean, he's look, he's not coming into star. He's coming out of the D League. Um, I really like Jimmer. He's a good player. I never would have drafted him that high. I thought he was a late first-round pick because of his size. Not really a... Not really a point guard in that league. He shoots it well. Um, reminds me of Mark Price without the point guard skills, but he's a great player. I don't know. The Knicks, you know, they, 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 they should try him out. He's a local. I think he's be a great eighth and ninth man. So what does that translate to in the NBA? I don't know, 15 minutes a game? So I'm surprised he only played him one, but there's no question he's going to give you instant offense and shoot, spread the D. And I always thought what's weird is I always thought he'd be better on a good team, if that makes sense. In other words, like, He's more valuable on the Spurs. He's almost like Steve Curry's. The better the team, the more valuable Jimmer is because he's going to make shots and spread the defense out. And he is quick as, you know, he gets it off and all that stuff. In other words, on a bad team, you're going to focus on him. So I was so kind of surprised he didn't try to go to, like, the best team in the league and be the eighth or ninth man. But hometown kid, I hope he makes it. Um, I remember the Glens Falls game. Him and he played Mike Lonigan was the coach in Vermont. He couldn't get in there. And uh, he's great for college basketball for the pros. I, you know, he, I admire his tenacity. And then, in other words, instead of taking a couple hundred grand to go over to Italy, he's staying in the NBDL and wants to see if he can get a shot with the Knicks. And then I think what this is all about is can he help him next year? Because if Grant doesn't get any better and he is a seasoned guy and he's from New York and, and then, you know, they want to score more points. And if they get, you know, Porzingis spreads the D, I like Jimmer. I, I, I'm a fan of his. I just, is he more than a 10 or 15 minute guy? I don't think so. Coach Jimmy Patsos brought to you by All Star Wine and Spirits right here on 104.5 The Team. Coach, Craig, our buddy Craig, he's the greatest. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'm probably going to head over there. I've, I've heard a little bit of brandy. You might help me out with my voice. It'll help you with your voice to snow. We're, we're, right, we're driving into the snow right now. But Craig, the dogs, the fish tanks, he's, he was at our game last night right there. And uh, he really cheers, like, on the front row. He does a great job. Gets our guys fired up. Gets in the other team's head. Although he didn't get in English his head because he made the free right in front of him. Ooh. But uh, Greg Allen's a great guy. Go over to All Star Wine Licks. My wife once a week goes there. It's a whole like field trip experience. <laughs> hey, coach. Uh, speaking of field trip, this Sunday we got to all take one over to the TU, right? Yeah, you guys are all coming over. I hope you come over. We got to go over there and uh, try and get the win against Quinnipiac. It's a two o'clock game, so we're going out afterwards at four to just kind of wrap the season up. We're looking forward to hanging out with you guys, and um, we'll tell you where we're going to go. We're not sure yet, but we we we're really focused on the Fairfield thing, and I. I think, you know, getting a lot of, we got a lot of sleep today. We didn't leave till three and it's a great game to play. They, they're, they're right on our heels and we know it. And these are the kind of games that are going to get you ready for the Mac. And if you ever go to the NCAA or any other postseason, all these games matter. And this is a big game for Fairfield, which means it's a big game for us, but we're looking forward to it. We're not afraid of the road warriors. I, if it's all the same with you, I'll drive that tanker. That's going to be said, you know, the old original road warrior mentality. We're going in there and they're playing well and that's okay. Coach, we're uh, we're there in spirit with you tomorrow, and uh, there in person with you Sunday versus Quinnipiac. Good luck, and let's lock up that third seed. Yeah, it'd be great, and I hope everybody comes out Sunday. Quinnipiac, you know, new team to the league too. It's they got a good young team, and Chase Daniels and all these guys. But two o'clock Sunday, without you know, great time to come out. Last time to see us play before the tournament. We really need everybody in the tournament, but come on down Sunday. You know, we all need you there. So you guys are great. Sorry, I wasn't in studio. I know it's not the same. And, I miss you, LeVac. I miss you too, Coach. And, hey, you know, anything for you guys, you know, anything that's going to make it easier for you to get a, a, a three games in the tourney instead of four, whatever. Yeah, no, we need it. My buddy Cashman keeps sending us. We'll do some Yankees next time. Like next week when I come in, we'll talk Yankees and how uh, spring training's going down there. All right, man. I look forward to it. I miss you, man. And uh, I'll see you Sunday. Thanks. Go see Craig at All Star Wine and Liquors.